Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training and in this video we're going to talk about the different types of fiber optic lines. In recent years, these abbreviations have become quite common. FTTN, which stands for Fiber to the Node, FTTC, which stands for Fiber to the Curb, and FTTH, which stands for Fiber to the Home. In this video, I'll explain what they are the differences between them and the advantages one may have over the other. Now here's a standard telephone network. This is before DSL. This is just a standard basic telephone network. Uh, before I start talking about DSL, I just want you to get a full understanding of what it was like before DSL and um, then I'm going to add the fiber optic cables and everything I show you the the changes and how it all works but in order to understand that you need to understand how the basic concept works first okay so just hang in there with me um, this is the central office and this is a subdivision okay now this is the main cable which connects that subdivision from the central office now the size of this cable all depends on the number of homes within this subdivision. Now each home needs at least one pair. So you got to have at least one pair for each home and usually, usually a few more pairs just for extras because some customers actually want two or three lines. So you know the minimum number of pairs within the cable from the central office is generally 100 but um, you know it all depends on the size of the, of the subdivision. Now this cable would go to a JW. JW stands for Junction Wired Interface. It's also commonly called cross box depending on who you're talking to but JWI is the more of a formal name Junction Wired Interface okay so now your cable is terminated within this box so if you have a hundred pairs in your cable all hundred pairs are terminated here now there are other cables terminated within this JW and these cables go to your customers locations now let's follow the, this cable here to see where it is going this cable is going to First Avenue uh, let's say this cable have 30 pairs in it. Uh, 10 of those pairs will be connected to this terminal, which is connected to this home, plus other homes as well. I just got one drawn in. And this would also be another 10 pairs on this terminal, and another 10 pairs on this terminal. And as you see, these terminals are how the homes are connected. Okay, so now all of these streets will be connected in the same way with the cable coming from the JW. Now, the next step here is let's say one of these customers here decided they want to get telephone service. Now, they will call a telephone company and the company will send a telephone tech out. That technician will have a service order and it would go to this JW. And it would, first of all, it would check to make sure that the telephone line that this customer is supposed to be getting is coming in from the central office on this main cable here. There will be a particular pair on the service order that he will check that pair. So once that telephone number is on that pair, now he will check to see what cable the customer is supposed to be going on. In this case, is a blue cable which will be supporting this customer here, which is connected to this terminal. So this blue cable would be the one. A pair on the service order would be assigned for this cable. Now, uh, as we said before, uh, if there are 30 pairs, 10 will be assigned to this terminal, another 10 here, another 10 there. So between 1 and 10 would probably be assigned here. So let's say pair 5 was assigned and pair 1 was assigned on the cable coming from the central office. So the technician would connect pair 1 to 5. Now you'll have your telephone number at this terminal. So the next step is to connect the cable coming from the subscriber's premises to the terminal. Generally, this is a two or three pair cable. You'll just connect one of the pairs to this terminal to get the telephone number to the customer's premises. And that's basically how it would be done for any one of these customers. So that's the basic concept of how the telephone service works. Now, a telephone line is a maximum of five kilometers. So this particular customer here could be as many as five kilometers away from the central office and the telephone service would work fine. However, for DSL services, 
the distance is much more limited. The distance for DSL services is a maximum of two miles, which is three kilometers. So what will happen here is that if you are close to the central office, you could subscribe for DSL service if you are within that two mile distance or three kilometer distance. It wouldn't be fast. It would only be about 1.6 megabits per second because you have a lot of coppers, two miles, so it's not going to be quick but you'll be able to get some sort of DSL service. However, as you get further away from that two miles, you, the service is going to start dropping. You're going to get slow service. So four kilometers up here, nothing. So ISPs realize very quickly that a large number of them metropolitan telephone subscribers couldn't get high speed internet because they were too far away from the central office. So they had to find a way to solve this problem. And the solution to this problem was fiber optic cables. And we're gonna talk on the next slide about how this was done using a service called FTTN and FTTC and later FTTH, which is fiber to the home. So stay with me on the next slide. You're gonna to get to learn a lot about fiber optics and how everything works. In order to solve the distance problem with DSL lines, telephone companies came up with FTTN services, that is fiber to the node. They call this the node, the GUE. So what they did is they run a fiber optic cable from the central office to the GUE. Now they're, they're gonna be using this fiber optic cable just for data. They'll continue using the copper cable for the telephone. Now within this box is the multiplexer that multiplexes the data and the voice line and sends it out on to the copper cable to the customer's premises. Now the advantage of this is that the maximum distance before could have been up to five kilometers between the central office and the customer's premises. But by using this fiber optic cable the maximum distance of copper between the GV and a customer is one mile or 1.5 kilometers. So there's a big difference. Now you could get higher speeds even at the maximum distance. You could still probably get speeds of 25 megabits per second, which is a far cry from the 1.5 megabits per second that we got before using all copper, right, at the best. So now, if the customer is close to the GV, you can get extremely high speeds of 50 megabits per second. But as you move away from the GV, right up to one mile away, you may get speeds as low as uh, 25 megabits per second. So FDTN solved some problems, but for some customers, they couldn't get services like IPTV because they were still too far from the central office. Yes, they have faster speeds than they had before because now at least they can get a VDSL1 type signal at 25 megabits per second here or 50 megabits per second down here. But 25 megabits per second is generally not enough for IPTV. You need 35 or 40 uh, megabits per second for that. So. In order to solve that problem, ISBs came up with fiber to the curb. Now fiber to the curb is where you have a GWE at every street. Every street here, 1st Avenue, 2nd Avenue, and 3rd Avenue have a GWE. Remember before all we had was a GWE on 3rd Avenue and we had to send the signal to all of these others using copper. Now we have a GWE at every one of the streets. And the maximum distance of these streets is maybe six, seven hundred meters maximum. So in most cases, all of these customers will be able to qualify for IPTV. All of them would be able to stream video. It should not be a problem um, at that distance. So by, but they did just didn't, in order to get this done, they just didn't, um, change these subdivisions. This was done with new subdivisions. As new subdivisions were built, instead of just having fiber to the node, 
they came up with fiber to the curb, which is fiber run to every street. And then from that street, uh, the signal will be connected to the terminal to the home. So you'll have this one connected to this home, which would be really close. So they should get extremely good speed. This one would, wouldn't be as fast, but it still be very fast because it's still within that distance that you'll get um, a very good data rate in comparison to what you're getting before. However, a lot of customers were still not satisfied. And the reason why is because, yes, they were getting a good downstream signal, but not upstream. So this is called asynchronous DSL where the speed in both directions are not the same. Generally, the speed down would be high and the speed up would be low. So you may get something like uh, 25 megabits per second down by seven megabits per second up. Uh, a lot of customers want more of a synchronous type of signal where you have the same speed down and the same speed up. FTT and FTTC both give you asynchronous type signals, uh, which is higher speed down and a lower speed up. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is fiber to the home, FTTH. This is a direct fiber cable right from the central office right to the customer's location. Now FTTH is a totally different network. It's an all fiber network. There's no copper on this network whatsoever. So it's a brand new network. It's in no way connected to the existing network in which we have just talked about. So the way this network starts is at the central office, we have an OLT, which is called an optical line terminal. The purpose of this OLT is to convert your electrical signal to a light signal and send it across the fiber optic cable. The CSP is located approximately one mile from the customer's premises. The CSP stands for central splitting point. So it basically doesn't convert anything. It just splits the signal and send the same signal to all the customers here. So basically at the customer's premises, there's a box called an ONT, which stands for optical network terminal. And this box convert the light signal back to an electrical signal. And this is where you can plug your modem in and then you know you can have your high speed internet and so on and so forth so it's as simple as that with this particular service you can have synchronous data at the same speed if you have one gigabit downstream you can also have one gigabit per second upstream as you know before we were talking about megabits 50 megabits per second on vdsl1 okay and now we we went from 50 megabits per second and we can we could actually get one gigabit per second on fiber to the home so it's it's the big difference between that service and this service here you have a total fiber optic service from the central office right to the customer's premises uh, unlimited bandwidth not like copper where the bandwidth is quite limited now you got unlimited bandwidth so there's no need to worry about bandwidth and fiber optic lines can go a much further distance even than they're being used of today. So this is the way of the future, uh, fiber optics. I have a video on fiber optics. If you'd like to learn a bit more about fiber optics, it's called How Fiber Optic Cables Work. And a link to that video would be within the description below. I hope this video has been helpful to you and if you have not subscribed as yet and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.